in our joy as we're enjoying your company with uh, Spackerman on the network crossing the country by the National Indigenous uh, Radio Service. Now I have the biggest pleasure of uh, not just myself meeting but introducing you to Michael Anderson. He is uh, with us here in Broome uh, talking to people about sovereignty. In fact, uh, his uh, job is very much a part of the Tent Embassy in Canberra. We've heard about uh, uh, the embassy over all of uh, the years and even have uh, spoken to people from there on many occasions and a pleasure to have uh, today Michael here in the studio with us. Michael, welcome. Yes, nice to be here with you. Yeah, welcome to Broome too. What brings you here? Yeah, you've got it down there. Winter here, that's good. I like this place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you from Central Park or anything? Yeah, I'm from um, my my mo my mother Yualiai and my father Gomeroy. We New South Wales, Queensland. You know, a little bit of South Queensland there. When them white fellas, they can't they couldn't draw circles around black fellas' boundaries, so they drew a straight line. And half my mob go Queensland, and half mob go New South Wales. So they mucked up a lot of times over there. So borderline people, as Gary would say. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. Is this your first time in Broome, Michael? No, I've been here before. A um, long time ago when I was working for the uh, NAC, I was the research director for the treaty when they were negotiating it with Malcolm Fraser and um, with that uh, National Aboriginal Conference. And um, one of your countrymen here was a representative, a fellow called PDU. He was the representative on the NAC at that time. Another old fellow up there now at uh, Wyndham there, uh, Reggie Birch, he was the other representative. Um, on that NAC when they were negotiating that treaty with Malcolm Fraser. And so, I, yeah, I, got, I had a lot to do with, um, with the treaty formation, all that research about um, what treaty looked like, uh, whether to get put into a constitution. So we did all that back in the 1980s. You know, we did five, five years of it in community consultations around the country um, in terms of what people want, um, what it would look like. So my job was to develop a framework for a treaty and, um, and then uh, look at what uh, what Oleamo want um, as the key um, matters that should be negotiated uh, in a treaty for Aboriginal people and our rights. So with the conversations everyone's having now, it's all been had before. Oh yeah, big time. Um, there's there's a lot of um, lot of lot of uh, paperwork down there in Canberra that no one's ever looked at. You know that uh, the old people talked about during the during the 1980s. You know like. Lois O'Donoghue um, and uh, another countryman from down over this way, he was a young uh, Wajak man from down at Perth there, um, Cedric Jacobs. Um, Brother Cedric, he was part of that negotiations when they first went out talking to um, all the um, blackfellas around the country. And so Lois O'Donoghue was one of them. So he, was, he was one fella and there was another fella um, who went around with them and then they had a little secretariat in the NAC until I come on board in 1981. I come over from the New South Wales um, Public Prosecutions Office and they employed me and asked me to come and head up that treaty and do some research for them. The Ken Embassy, how did you get involved there? Uh, 1972, well 1971, um, 70, 71, 72 we had that Black Power movement in Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne going and uh, we were going after land rights and sovereignty and you know and, and stopping the stolen generation stop taking our children compensation and all that sort of stuff we had a big movement going on and um, we had you know anywhere between three and five thousand uh, white students on board with us when we were marching in the streets in sydney you know for land rights a lot of that was influenced by um vincent lingiari mob and um that uh, wayville walk-off cattle station walk-off and that inspired us. We, we were already fighting down there for ci civil rights, citizen rights. You know, we, we didn't want to become white Australians. We just wanted to uh, be the same, have the same rights as white, white fellas to walk in any part of the town. Because back in those days, when I was growing up in the 50s and early 60s, before that 67 referendum, us black fellas were restricted as where we can go, where we could shop, you know. And um, 
back those days we my remember my mother having to go around the police station to get a food order to go and buy food or buy some clothes down the Chinaman shop because the white fellas didn't want our food orders so um, yeah so I grew up in that era and you know and I tell my mother about what they do now to people with this basic card and all these food order stuff um, um, I, I find it I find it amazing and my mother finds it very very insulting that uh, the government should be bringing those sort of things back to our people and you know we've been through this and nobody should go through that and so we we say in you know civil rights and then anyway when that white fella Billy McMahon Prime Minister uh, back then in 72 um, said no nah, we we're going to lease land to Aboriginal people we're not going to give them ownership of land well that was like holding a red bull out to a, uh, a red flag out to a wild bull you know we went after it and um, and so we had, a, we had a demonstration in Sydney and then then me and a couple of other blokes, we volunteered. We go down to Canberra now and we set something up and that's how the embassy came about. Yeah, and they tried to kill off the embassy once but it was only returned, wasn't it? Oh, they, they tried to kill, kill it off a couple of times but, you know, like that big time in uh, 72 in July when they really tried to get rid of it, they changed the law uh, because when we went there and set up, there was no law, see? They couldn't stop us from being there. And so then the Parliament made an ordinance uh, to kick us off, and then we... Um, there were thousands of people who came there, thousands, and we, we had fights with policemen. Uh, I remember when we had that big fight, um, there was... Um, how many? 18 of us went to jail, uh, got locked up, and uh, 36 policemen went to hospital, and one of our fellows went to hospital. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was one of the ugliest things I've ever experienced in terms of a demonstration and fighting for our rights because um, they used to come in and raid us in Sydney and kick us in the guts and knock us down, turn all off of the lights in the pubs where we'd be. And, you know, they used to bring in the, what they call the 21 Division, the police riot squad, and, and just come in to bust us young fellas. And, uh, but we, fo we fought back and, you know, and we survived. And um, we, re we went after them in their law system and said, you can't do this, you can't break people's uh, human rights like this. And so it was a hard fight, um, but the government had to listen. And um, uh, because otherwise it would have all got really ugly and Australia didn't want to end up like another South Africa. Yeah, I mean, it's ugly at the moment with what's been said about the constitutional reform perhaps falling on deaf ears for the moment. It's very crucial in the next year or so to try and get some things through that managed to make distractions with same-sex marriage and other issues that are currently being discussed. How do you feel about the, the climate that Aboriginal people are in at the moment? Are we in for a cancer this time maybe or is it something that's going to slip through our fingers? Well, I don't think, um, but like the government and the people who've been running these programs, uh, like, you know, the Referendum Council, they, they've not been really honest to our people. Um, it, it's very misleading. And um, one of the things that uh, that's shocking to me is the fact that, see, Whitefellas, if you look at um, the law under the Constitution now and in the past, Aboriginal people have never been citizens of this country. We've never been. We've never been the king's subjects. We've never been the queen's subjects. We've been Aborigines all this all this time, and um, we've been the native population. So this word indigenous and all that Aboriginal stuff that, that you know that's that's all out of whack. You know they bought them words and they're playing tricks. You know, and um, for us we've been natives. We are the natives. We and and see John Howard bought in that word indigenous because you see. When you look at the dictionary, English dictionary, that indigenous means anybody born of the land or born from the land, yeah? So that means all them whitefellas who come here, all them foreigners who come here, when they have children here, they're also indigenous to Australia now. That's the way you read the word indigenous. Um, and so they're indigenous to this country by, by, by uh, virtue of their birth. Now, <laughs> so that, that don't relate to us, that's very different. So we're the native population and, um, and, and when you look at the Constitution of Australia, um, uh, th and this is where what amazes me when I talk to when I listen to white lawyers talking about um, this thing about saying, "Oh, we're not going to interfere with Aborigines," I, I find that that a lot of these people are telling lies because um, um, one of the things that they're misrepresenting is the fact that 
under the Australian Constitution, if you was not if you were not a franchise person when they first come in, when they first had the election for the Australian Parliament in 1901, if you weren't a franchise person under the state law at the time, then you had no rights uh, to vote in that election. And um, so you had to work out how you get franchised. Now, the strange thing is that Aboriginal people under state law back then, we were all um, protected people and we were all natives under native welfare. And none of us were franchised. We didn't have a right to vote. We didn't have a right to go uptown. We didn't have a right to be free on our country. We were all locked up. We were prisoners on our own land. And the way they gave you a franchise and gave you the right to be free is when they gave you citizen rights and they gave you that thing they call the dog tag, the exemption certificate. And if you look at all them exemption certificates, every exemption certificate that I've seen in this country uh, um, says you are no longer an Aborigine for the purpose of the act. So so that means you're someone else now. You're not an Aborigine anymore. And you could get your license cancelled, that, that exemption cancelled if you mix with the old mob again. And uh, that was the rules. So we, we could have first out work out whether we're citizens of this country first. And if we're not citizens of this country, well then that puts us in a very different ball game. The Australian constitution as it stands now um, when after that 1967 referendum, um, the 1967 referendum only took the word except the Aborigines of the states out, yeah, that, so they scrubbed that out, so that that made it so that the Commonwealth could pass laws for any race, yeah, and there's no word Aboriginal anymore in there after the 67 referendum. Then the next one, they took out section 127, and section 127 meant that they could count Aborigines as people in Australia. So they, when they want to determine the population of Australia, well then they can count Aborigines. But before then, they couldn't, par couldn't count Aborigines as Australians. So now, under the Austra current Australian constitution, when the government make law for Aborigines, they have to make laws for the Aboriginal race. So that sets us apart from the white race. So that means we're not Australians. We are the Aboriginal race. Oh, and uh, that's exactly what you're going to be sharing in uh, the way of conversation with people here in Broome. The truth and nothing but the truth. Absolutely. Um, I've been looking at a lot of things here since I've been here for the last uh, week. And um, the things uh, that I've been reading is shocking. Um, those illures and the way in which they're all done. Um, the way in which white people and mining companies operate. You know, they... they our people are being very cleverly ripped off, very cleverly ripped off. And um, when I see people who are traditional owners, who've got native title, walk in the streets and watching the policemen grab their beer with that they get a little bit of cash and they might buy a beer and sit in the park and they tip that out on them, yeah, and they tell them you can't drink there or you can't be here. And these people are traditional owners with tourist resorts on their, on their places and they get nothing from that there, that there's something very wrong. You know, mining companies out there giving these people, you know, pennies and, um, you know, some people can't get cash. They're only allowed to get order form, yeah? Um, what they call them things, um, purchase orders, you know? That's discrimination. You, you give that to a white fella and tell him, you can't get cash, mate, you've got to have a purchase order. That white man, he'll go straight to a lawyer and he'll go after you. Now, here, our mob, our mob haven't got that sort of backup and that support. And that, and that it makes me angry, it, it, uh, it disturbs me big time, and um, I think something has to be done about it. Well, you've been like a breath of fresh air meeting you, Michael, and uh, thank you very much for coming into the studio with us, you're wanting to catch up with people and you're going to be doing some talks around town. I'm going to do a talk today at uh, dinner time, yeah, and um, I'm on a year, I leave uh, this afternoon to go back, but um, I'm coming back in about a, a three weeks, month time, and working with some people up that way near Wyndham and Kununurra and Normalgurry, and um, yeah, we want to take the people home. Thank you. Good on you, thank you. Michael Anderson, a very special guest with us, and lucky to have him 
from uh, the Tent Embassy here in our studios uh, with Galari Media. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, a pleasure. That was so beautiful. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.